YouTube, 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 YouTube world. Salute, 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 salute. What's that in the main? What it do? Welcome to Boxing After Dark. It's Nocturnal Thoughts. Yo, make this real quick video. Then I'm going to get out the way. Hey, so Carl Frampton, the jackal. You know, he had to postpone his fight with Jamel Herring due to a hand injury. And trust me, I feel your pain. Yo, the other day, I hurt my neck, you know what I'm saying, so bad that I couldn't even go into work. I hurt my neck so bad that right now, I can't even tie my do-rag up, you feel me? No pain, no gain. I wish this man a uh, uh, recovery, a quick recovery, get well soon, so him and Jamel Herring can get in there and rumble, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the winner of that fight, can throw their hat in the ring with Shakur Stevenson. Oh, another thing I want to say, I should have started off my video like this, you know what I'm saying? Um, but let me say my thoughts go out to everybody right now in Texas that's suffering from, um, you know, power outages and water uh, issues. I have my, my daughter out in Texas, Houston, and I have a brother-in-law over in San Antonio. You know what I'm saying? So I know right now, y'all, I'm in Illinois. So we used to this situation. And my daughter, both my brother-in-law and my daughter are from Illinois. So they know how to handle themselves and drive and do all these things in this type of weather. But still, when the whole city is under siege like this, then, you know, you just got to go with the flow. And you only can do so much, especially with no power. So my thoughts go out to you. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just stay bunkered down. You know what I'm saying? And just there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? And pretty soon this will be a memory. You dig? So back to boxing. Um, so, you know, like I, like they were saying, you know, the, the Jackal versus Jamel Herring is not really creating a whole lot of buzz. But it is, you know, moving some furniture around. You know what I mean? We, we get some movement in boxing. You know, we're getting some 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 whispers of some good names. Uh, we got a fight coming up with Adrian Broner and Santiago. Um, I need to do some research on Santiago. You know, the main focus right now, of course, from my perspective with Adrian Broner, whether or not he could come back and be successful. He said he vowed that he would be a champion again. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, from my point of view, that's gonna be hard. I have to see it. I really have to see it. Um, you know, he gained a lot of weight. He stayed inactive for a very long time. And he's never really shown the ability, in my opinion. Well, I take it back. He's never really shown the ability to come back and stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's always had this way of kind of self-sabotaging his career, even after success. I always felt like Adrian Broner does better without the success. You know, he just has that type of mentality that he sabotages. After he succeeds, he sabotages, similar to like a Tyson Fury. You know, it's hard for them to handle success. Like he said in his little album, I never listened to it yet, and I shouldn't call it little, but his album, Still Adjusting to Fame, my thing is the adjustments that he needs to make is... is he needs to adjust to me to not being famous. I think he just does better mentally when he's not in the spotlight. So I, I almost hope, I don't want him to lose. I want him nothing but success, but I just feel like he has a hard time dealing with success. So even if he wins against Santiago, you know, outside of boxing, where do I see Adrian Broner going, but except for into, you know, more and more, um, drama and, and and dysfunctional situations in his life and I wish nothing but the best for him for him to grow and evolve as a man I don't know if boxing has it, to me like to me YouTube right now is a hobby for me to me for Adrian Broner boxing became more of a hobby you know what I'm saying and you can't play boxing and I don't I don't I don't see you being able to go go out of shape be inactive gain that much weight, drink, indulge in, you know, things that are completely anti-boxing. And then, 
you know, weight drain yourself, go on a crash diet and bounce back like that. But it's going to be interesting to see what kind of shape he's going to be in. Let's see what what version of of um, Adrian Broner we get. You know, if you're going to see like a, you know, Adrian Broner versus Paula Malinaji or Adrian Broner versus Ashley Theo Payne or Adrian Broner versus, you know, Jesse Vargas or Adrian Broner versus Mikey Garcia or Adrian Broner versus Marcus Maidana. We don't know. I'm not too familiar with Santiago, but, you know, it seems like Santiago is trying to get past Adrian Broner, use him as a stepping stone and throw his name in the hat with mentions of, you know, Josh Taylor's, Jose Ramirez, and, you know, Regis Progray. Um, that's another guy that people really wanted to see Adrian Broner fight, Regis Progray, the Rougarou, you know what I'm saying? But I think Josh Taylor is a problem right now, honestly. But it's going to be interesting to see the outcome of Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez, honestly. There's two different styles, and I favor Josh Taylor's style, but I do see... Jose Ramirez being a threat. And I need to go back and do some more film study on Jose Ramirez. I had watched a bunch of his fights, but I need to go back and rewatch some of his fights just to see uh, if I still keep the same thought process in my assessment looking at Josh Taylor going against Jose Ramirez. Um, also, Otto Val his name, Otto Valin is having a fight with Dominic Brazil on the undercard of Adrian Broner. Now that's going to be somewhat interesting to get the heavyweight, you know, heavyweights moving some things around. Um, but I lean towards Otto Violin. Dominic Brazil is a tough guy, you know, but his last performance was what against, you know, uh, Deontay Wilder with the first round knockout. Um, I don't know the, the, um, you know, the shock wave, how that's going to affect his his fortitude in his next venture because it's been so long since he's been he's been an actor for a very long time. You know, I don't know what kind of what kind of effort he's gonna bring, what kind of physical adjustments he's made. Um, but he's a tough dude. And Otto Violin is a tough dude too. Last time we seen Otto Violin you know, he was in a fight with Tyson Fury. He was somewhat considered a journeyman. Nobody knew who he was until he split Tyson Fury's face open and went 12 rounds. Now, I believe he got dominated for the most part in those 12 rounds, but he showed some wily tactics, man. He showed some grit and he showed, you know, he's a tough guy. And, you know, I feel like he might be able to get past Dominic Brazil and move, move up into the heavyweight division to be a little bit more of a threat. So um, I'm looking at that right now, seeing how that's going to play out. Um, give me a little sip. High quality H2O. So um, I'm looking at how that's going to play out. Also, what caught my attention, uh, of course, Terrence Bud Crawford is still trying to pull off a fight with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is asking for, you know, $40 million. Sean Porter is trying to fight Terrence Bud Crawford or he's trying to fight Errol Spence. You know what I'm saying? So uh, things are at least starting to have some, some flow, some movement to it, you know. So we'll see how 2021 goes. I feel like there's a lot of good fights that's being talked about and there's some decent fights that's being made. You know, if you really pay attention to what's happening right now, I think that, you know, 2021 is still going to, bring some decent fights you know uh, a lot of a lot of talk is still about Teofimo Lopez versus Cambosos um my thing is like Teofimo Lopez when he won against uh Lomachenko who by the way Lomachenko might possibly fight in Masayoshi Nakatani I think that's a good fight and Devin Haney possibly might be fighting Jorge Lenores that's also another good fight although I feel like, you know, Jorge Lenores is on, you know, the back end of his career. You know, last time I watched him, he was getting knocked out. Uh, I forget the guy he was fighting. He went up a weight class. He fought this dude, and I don't even think the, the dude didn't even look like he had a lot of skills, but he definitely had some power, and he just obliterated Jorge Lenores. So, you know, to see him come back down to fight Devin Haney, I really feel like Devin Haney 
still has the same advantages and it's not a big step up from him fighting, um, you know, your Kiss Gamboa. You dig what I'm saying? Like, Ryan Garcia stepping up to fight Luke Campbell, even though Luke Campbell had lost against Jorge Lenores and lost against Lomachenko, it was still close and he made a good account for himself. Um, you know, he got dropped. He got dropped by Lomachenko, you know. But still, Devin Haney is making step-up fights. He's, he's stepping up. I would rather see Devin Haney in a fight with um, Ryan Garcia, honestly. I think these young guys need to stop fighting these old guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like right now, this whole situation with Javante Tank Davis, with Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, and Devin Haney, those four guys are trying to uh, build up the fights, trying to, you know, uh, let their name become a household name so they can bring more money. Like Ryan Garcia right now is leading the pack as far as being popular because of his YouTube success and his Instagram success and his connection to those uh, two brothers. I forget their name sometime, um, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. But um, Devin Haney did a good self of branding himself. But it seemed like he's taking a hit to his career with his blowout whitewash fight against, you know, Yoriokas Gamboa. But the problem was we needed to see him uh, KO Gamboa. After after Gamboa, Gamboa's been dropped 15, 16, 17 times. And he was completely knocked out by um, Javante Tank Davis. And even some people thought that wasn't a great performance from, from, from uh, Javante Tank Davis. So for Javante Tank Davis to fight Yoriokas Gamboa, Gamboa ruptures his Achilles heel. You know, he gets dropped three times. He gets knocked out in the 12th round. We want to see Devin Haney come and be able to take him out in six rounds. You go in a 12th round fight, you, you, you completely dominate the fight, but it leaves people to wonder if you have power. You know, they, they soon forgot about that fight you had against... Um, the one ki one kid you turned into a highlight reel before you fought Santiago. But anyways, I know I'm all over the place. Uh, and that's cool because boxing right now is all over the place. And, um, you know, I'm not going to stretch this video out long. My thing is everything is a process. Everything takes time. And you got to appreciate boxing for what it is and what it will be. Um, I think a lot of people feel like, like a fight between Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence it's just supposed to happen like that. Like it's old school, you know what I'm saying, third grade, you know what I'm saying, do you want to go out on a date with me or do you want to be my boyfriend or do you want to be my girlfriend? Check yes, check no, check maybe so. And we're not looking at the grand, the, the, the totality behind us. And, you know, some people want to talk about boxing or some people want to talk about business. Some people want to try to combine it and talk about all. I like what Derek James said when he was explaining before um, before Errol Spence fought uh, Sean Porter, somebody cornered him and, and had him spilling some beans about Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence possibilities. And he was trying to explain the infrastructure behind you got two big companies, two big networks, two big promotional companies, companies, and everybody's trying to get paid. And we're trying to, and everybody's, you know, you got to, who's bringing the most to the pot? You know what I mean? So it's not going to be as easy as check yes or check no when you're looking at these contracts. You dig what I'm saying? It's like, I remember watching um, Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao fight, you know, because I knew, we all knew, like, when, when Mayweather signed the contract for the, for the Pacquiao fight, he used an exclusive pen that was made that cost, I think the pen cost a million dollars. So he used a million dollar pen, just the pen, you know what I'm saying? Like, this right here, this little pencil, imagine if this pencil cost a million dollars. He used a million, I think it was a million, something like that. It was an extremely ridiculous amount of money. But he used a pen that cost more money than some of these fights are making, are being able to generate. 
You know what I'm saying? Even the biggest fights that we're talking about right now. Like, it's hard right now for Manny Pacquiao to get the $40 million from Terrence Bud Crawford. It's hard for Sean Porter to get over a $2 million offer for Terrence Bud Crawford. I think the pen that Mayweather used to sign the contract was a $1 million. But anyways, I remember looking at how much money that fight was about to generate. Like, I remember Floyd Money Mayweather talking about he was going to get a $100 million check for the fight. And on the back end, he was going to get even another... 100 million guaranteed it was making like 300 400 million dollars in 30 minutes you know what i'm saying but i remember looking at the setup from the ring to the judges to everybody doing the announcements all the way out to you know what i'm saying the crowd and it was like just to me the sea of people that all was like having this feeding frenzy everybody's getting paid everybody's getting paid all these guys the majority of people there for the first five six rows wasn't even fans it was just people that was working getting paid and i, I looked at it like man all these people getting paid off of what two people are about to do that's like looking at a colony of bees it's like looking at a beehive with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bees and all this honey all this honey flowing but it's only two bees that's making the honey. But all these other all these other bees have a have a life, have a existence just based off of what two bees are doing. That's crazy to me. So, you know, when I look at these fighters trying to get paid these days and, and fans are talking about, oh, they shouldn't be worried about the business and it shouldn't. Who cares about the 50 50 split? Who cares about a 60 40 split? And it's like, man, when these fighters say they put their life on the line. They put their life on the line. And I feel like some, sometimes you hear that, but it's said, it's just kind of glimmed over. It's kind of glazed over. Or they put their life on the line because you hear it so much now, it becomes a cliche. Like life is just not pre precious. Like we all put our life on the line on a regular basis. And we really, I don't want to preach, but I'm just saying, as a boxing fan and as a man, who's really trying to appreciate every single second of every single day because life is just not promised. I'm saying, if you entertain by boxing, you should want all these boxers to win and be successful. And no, they shouldn't just get so caught up on the business that we lose the fights and the fights don't happen because I feel like it is somewhat a tragedy to a boxer's career, to boxing and to boxing fans to see that this has the potential to be the best fighting the best which is very rare but the best fighting the best and that's what we want to see we don't want to see the best fighting all the rest we want to see the best fighting the best and when you see the potential for that to happen you know that's what gets the soap opera going that's what creates the yin and yang really when you get the two opposites that seem like they just can't come together um but it's equal you know what I mean? It's equal powers coming together. So I'm still optimistic. I still want to see Terrence. I feel like Terrence Bud Crawford should fight Sean Porter. I think that's just a perfect fight. Perfect fight to test Terrence Crawford's medal. I mean, I watched I remember I watched the, the interview that, that uh, Terrence Bud Crawford did on B Brian Custer. And he was saying, how many champions have Errol Spence fought versus how many champions I fought? And it was like, he went down the line of Errol Spence and he was like five. You know, he, he was like Kell Brook, Sean Porter, uh, Danny Garcia, Lamont Peterson, and um, Mikey Garcia. It's like five. He's like, how many did I fight? And Brian Custer had to think. Mm. And it was like, um, you know, Victor Postal, Yorio Keith Gamboa, um, uh, What's that? I forget the other guy's name uh, right off the top. But he fought uh, Kell Brook, Jeff Horn, um, and Dongo, and maybe Hank Lundy. And then after he said that, he kind of had this look on his face. And he said, see, seven. I fought at least seven. And then he went on to say, none of these guys have been able to push me to bring out the best version of Terrence Bud Crawford. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, to me, that was a little bit of a sidebar.
because he's still looking for competition. He's still looking for that person that's going to match him and bring out the best in him, which I feel like all fighters do. When they're at the best and when they're at the elite level, they're looking for that competition. Like Tyson Fury said, I'm traveling the world as a gypsy. I'm traveling the world to find somebody that's a formidable opponent, and I still haven't found one yet. Salute. So it's like Terrence Bud Crawford should be in this nomadic state, like the Kung Fu guy that's just going to look for the challenge. And I think he found, I think he finds it with Errol Spence. You know, I think that is an ultimate, you know, two, two masters fighting at the elite level. But at the same time, going into that fight, I feel like a Sean Porter fight prepares him for that fight even more, even more. Because Sean Porter is that truth machine. Sean, Sean Porter goes in there and he's going to take his pound of flesh, but he's going to push you know, I don't know. That's the only thing I worry about just a little bit. If Sean Porter gets that fight with Terrence Bud Crawford, what Sean Porter version are we going to see? Are we going to see that Sebastian Formella, Jordanus Ugas? Or are we going to see that version against Pauli Malignaggi or Alberto? You know what I'm saying? Or even when he fought against um, Adrian Broner or Keith Thurman or Danny Garcia or Errol Spence. I want to see the best Sean Porter fight the best Terrence Bud Crawford. You know what I'm saying? I want to see Terrence Bud Crawford that fought Jeff Horn and fought the mean machine, Agitas Kobolowskis. I want to see him fight in his version against the Sean Porter that fought against Errol Spence and the Sean Porter that fought against Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to see. And then the winner between that, because I, I still think that's a very, very tough fight, but I really give Terrence Bud Crawford the edge. You know what I'm saying? There's a little debate whether or not uh, I was watching. I was watching Famous AAA. Salute to Famous. Famous. I was watching his live just a little bit. I couldn't watch the whole thing. was busy. I'm in rehab. <laughs> but uh, somebody on his live left a comment and said, Me Machine beat Sean Porter. They had a similar style. Me Machine knocking people out. But his resume is really not that deep. In the last fight we see him in before he got beat by Terrence Bud Crawford was against, um, you know, Sh Sh Robinson, which was a draw. Um, to me, the Mean Machine just is a front runner. And he can come out with some power and then he fades off. Sean Porter, the best versions of Sean Porter, Sean Porter is a throwback fighter. Football style, rough tumble, rumble elbows head butts but he is he's like to me trained to go you can chop off his head and he's still going to be throwing punches i mean we've seen him get a flash knockdown against adrian broner got back up and shrugged it off and we've seen him take a ugly 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 punch from errol spence and his hand touched the ground i mean he's his neck was slow motion it was blah 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 blah, blah. but his glove touched the ground he didn't even damn near take a knee and got back up and was like let's go and he can do that for 12 15 20 rounds probably you see him running in the desert punching punching bags i mean the dude is conditioned where he's going to give me machine in the second half of the fight he's going to turn that fight into another sebastian formella in my opinion because the mean machine doesn't have the kind of power that's going to just knock out sean porter. i just don't see mean machine knocking out sean porter and i definitely don't see mean machine having more conditioning and stamina than, than sean porter not even close like the performance against sean porter and sebastian formella was to me only 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 unimpressive because sean porter never really dropped sebastian but he rocked him and whitewashed him for 12 rounds and just had to do totally discombobulated and made him look like an amateur anyway so my point is terrence bud crawford should be fighting sean porter errol spence should be fighting your danis ugas that's going to give him more leverage people always want to go back and look at errol spence and says he's ducking and he's running and he's a coward and i'm like well, who want to watch a coward who why why do you even pay so much attention to someone if you think they're a duck or think they're a coward I don't want to watch a coward. I'm not even entertained or bothered by cowards. If I if I see you and I label you as a coward, I'm going to lose interest in you. 
I'm not going to follow your career. I'm not going to know who you fought. I'm not going to know your resume. I'm not going to know everything that you didn't say. I'm not going to hang on to every single word that you say if I feel like you're a coward and you're not a warrior. So if you are not a warrior and you're a coward and you're a duck, why is it that these, why are you, why are you so involved in what he says? Nevertheless, always to more, to me, Errol Spence had a game plan. He had a strategy. You know what I'm saying? He had a setback with the, with the car accident, and he's had a big comeback fighting Danny Garcia. Um, you know, fighter, talking about fighters fighting injured. You know, Frank, Frank, Frank Hampton is postponing the fight because of a hand injury. You know what I'm saying? Lomachenko lost to, to Lopez because of a shoulder injury, supposedly. At the same time, Lopez had a foot injury. That's why I show that grit with Lopez. With a boot on, he's still training. With a boot on, he was still training. So I, I want to see him go over there and fight Cambosos, but then I will start putting pressure on him to fight Devin Haney, period, point blank. Go fight your mandatory and Gambosos, and then come back and fight Devin Haney. I don't want to hear no more excuses after that. Unless Devin Haney loses to Lenores, I don't want to see no excuses pass. Well, I fought Cambosos. Now we got to get this money and, and Devin Haney, you know, blah, blah. No, fight Gambosos, Cambosos, then fight either Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, or Javante Tank Davis, period, point blank. I don't want to see Javante Tank Davis mixing it up with Gary Russell Jr. I don't want to see uh, Ryan Garcia fighting old Manny Pacquiao. I don't want to see, you know, Devin Haney fighting Jorge Lenores, to be honest with you. But anyways, back to what I'm saying. Errol Spence had a, had a, had a strategy, had a war path, and he has stated it clearly. And Errol Spence was it's like a Kill Bill list. And on the Kill Bill list, who was at the top of the list for Kill Bill? Bill. Bill was. You know what I'm saying? That was the last. That was the last boss of the last level. That was how she got, that, that was how B went and got her revenge and got her daughter back, who she didn't even know was still alive. But anyways, Errol Spence always put Terrence Bud Crawford at the top of the list. This is the this is the the damn zenith, you know what I'm saying? My list was Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, um, Manny Pacquiao, and then I want to fight Terrence Bud Crawford to cap it all off, and then I'm moving out of this weight class. You see what I'm saying? Now, they moved some furniture around with Manny Pacquiao, and kind of took the side door out and vacated that belt or had the belt took from him. And you elevate your Daniels Ugas. So that changes things. I can see Errol Spence saying, okay, well, I want to collect these belts. Let me go over here and fight your Daniels Ugas. That increases my leverage. That increases my negotiations leverage. When I make this contract, it's not just check yes, check no, check maybe. So it's look, I'm the biggest draw. I bring in the pay per view and I got three belts. Come see me. You know what I'm saying? The hunt, you want to be the hunter? You want to come hunt me? You want to put a target on my back? Look at what I got. I'm strapped up. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that move. It's a chess move. It's the best move. But let's see how it all plays out. I hope to see the fight at the end of 2021. If I don't, I don't. There's plenty of fights that I would want to have seen growing up that I didn't get to see. And there's plenty of fights that I didn't even think that I wanted to see but ended out being great. Like, I want to see great fights. I know we want to see the best fight the best, but at the end of the day, I just want to see great fights. And sometimes great fights come attached to people that don't even have household names. So that's the end of this video. I appreciate, 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 appreciate y'all time. Thank you for rocking with me. Pray for everybody that's over in Texas, you know what I'm saying, that they get their power back on and get things back to shaking and moving. Um, Till next time. Drop some comments in the below, which I'll think about Gary Russell Jr., Carl Frampton, Jamel Herring, um, you know, uh, Shakur Stevenson, Teofimo Lopez fighting Gambosos, uh, Lomachenko fighting your uh, Masayoshi Nakatani. That's going to be a dope, dope fight, in my opinion. Very dope fight. That makes me very proud of Lomachenko and very proud of Masayoshi Nakatani. And then let me know what you guys think about... Um, Dominic Brazil versus Otto Wallen Violin. That's going to be a decent little fight, too, for the heavyweights. Because um, you never know. That might be the fight of the year. You just never know what they're going to bring to the table. 
you know, it might be the knockout of the year. How about that? You might get the knockout of the year. You might see Dominic Brazil get split open. And then my next video, we'll talk about Tyson Fury looking like he's out of shape and him going into battle with, you know, Anthony Joshua psycholo psychologically. We'll see, we'll see about that. Because I didn't think Tyson Fury looked that far out of shape. And to me, the shape of Tyson Fury matters more what he looks like physically than he looks like our he, he his mat his shape to me matters more how he looks psychologically and mentally versus physical because his physical is an illusion and looking out of shape we already know is proven don't mean anything you know when you look at andy ruiz first fight against anthony joshua he didn't look like he was in the greatest shape then we didn't know he could get even more out of shape coming in at 280 but anyways that's another video for another day. This is 30 minutes long, so I appreciate y'all for rocking with me this long. You know what I mean? This might be the last video I make for the week because really, man, my neck is, uh, I, I need to relax and rest it and uh, figure out what I'm going to do. I might even have to, I might, I doubt it, but I might have to go to a chiropractor to get some adjustments. I need to do that anyway. Matter of fact, I need to start going to the chiropractor at least three times out the, out the year anyway. But I don't want to go off the emergency. I want to go off of a plan. So anyways, man. So anyways, new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It's not eternal thoughts, boxing after dark. You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned. Peace. Be blessed. I'm out.